recording the oral history interview of Usanio Ayetsi, 56th Armored Infantry Battalion, 12th Armored Division, World War II, taking the interview at the 65th Reunion, Washington, D.C., on the 5th of August, 2011. Okay, sir, let's start out at the very beginning. What did you do before you entered the Army? Where were you when the war started? Uh, when the war started, I was working in New York shipyard, building a battleship, South Dakota, 35,000 tonner. And how old were you? I was 21 years old. Now, were you drafted into the Army or did you enlist? I was drafted. Okay, where did you take your basic training? At Fort Dix, New Jersey. What was the transition like, going from being just a regular shipyard guy to being in the Army? Well, how much of a shock was it? Well, I wasn't too happy going in the Army because I'm the type that didn't like to take orders. <laughs> and I figured the Army it was it. But I gradually got accustomed. In fact, I was only in about six or seven months before I got my, became a private first class. So, any friendships or experiences during training that you uh, that spring to mind? That well, I, I got along practically with all the guys, you know, because easy to get along with, you know, language-wise. I, I knew a couple languages. Which languages did you know? French. I, I was pretty good in French. In fact, I had two years of it in high school, and when I got overseas, I used to go and interpret it. No Italian, too. Hmm? Italian, too. Oh, Italian, but I didn't go to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, when did you join the 12th Armored Division? How did you wind up there? Well, I, end, I ended up at uh, what's Camp Campbell, right? Now it's Fort, Fort Campbell. That's where I ended up. When I first got there, it was all mud, and all I did was build walks, wooden walks. Two weeks, I was on my hands and knees, pounding away, building the walks. But it was pretty good. And, you know, I, I got accustomed to it, you know. So learn to follow orders, do what you're told. That's the only way to keep out of trouble. <laughs> okay, so then from Camp Campbell to the Tennessee Maneuvers, so what, what happened, you know, they, they called me in, in the orderly room and said, you're going to Fort Knox. I said, why am I going to Fort Knox? I said, you're going to tank school. I said, why? Why should I go to tank school? I said, because your mechanical aptitude score is very high. So I was there for 11 weeks or 12 weeks, but it was really good training. And what did they train you on, driving or repair? Maintenance of the tanks, the whole thing from Start to finish, I learned all about the tanks. And when I went back to the outfit, we had three tanks in our company, and I took care of all of them, including driving. So can you tell me anything about Camp Barkley, Texas? Well, Camp Barkley, well, that was, <laughs> it was a hot place, not, not too nice to be in. But you, you survive, you know. And what happened, I went, in the meantime, I went home on furlough and got married. And I, my wife came and stayed in Texas with me for a couple of months. Okay, then of course from Camp Barkley up to Camp Shanks, New York. Yeah, that's where we went, Camp Shanks, the train ride, blah, 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 until yep. we got on the boat and went overseas. But I hated that boat ride. I got so seasick, I, was go I, was, I wanted to actually jump overboard. But they had uh, guards up there top deck to say, where do you think you're going? I said, I'm going up to get some air. I said, no, you're not, go down. So I didn't get a chance to jump overboard. <laughs> okay, now of course, landing in England at Tidworth Barracks. Oh yeah, that's where we went. That, that was a nice place to be. Cold, miserable, lousy food, unbelievable. And of course, then to France, to Lahar. Yeah, we went over on the boat, but when we crossed the English Channel, we hit a storm, and we had our equipment all on the boat, right? And they were tied down with chains, but they were banging around. I said, boy, if one of these things breaks loose, we're all dead, because we were sleeping on the deck, actually. But we made it across, and there we were. 
Now, you said you were trained in maintenance of the tanks. Was that your combat duty, or did, you, did they have you do other things as well? No, I, I'm, basically that's what I did, the maintenance. Now, did you have any any combat experiences yourself, or were you, you were always in the back? Oh, yeah, well, I was trained. I was expert marksman, you know, all that stuff. Everything they taught me, I really learned it, because I figured, you know, I'm depending on that. So that was part of my good training, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, were you there for the Battle of Hurlishine? Yeah, in fact, I got hurt at Hurlishine. Tell me about it. On January the 9th, I was in this house, and it was terrible, the, the bombing and the shelling. So I was sleeping on the ground floor, and I said, this is not too good. I think I'll go down in the basement. So I was standing up by this window, and as I stooped over to pick up my sleeping bag, a shell exploded out back, threw me across the room. I had kind of, must have kind of blacked out. And then the first thing I heard somebody saying, is anybody in here? Because everything was so dark. But I could feel blood, you know, running down my. I said, yes. Yeah. So they picked me up, took me out and got me first aid. How badly were you hurt? Not, not really too bad. They sent me to the hospital. I had stuff in my eyes and everything. They sent me to the hospital. I was in there about five, six days. And our guys were really getting hurt, you know, and they were coming in. I said, look, I can walk. I said, I don't want to stay in the hospital. Get me back to the alpha. And that's what they did. They took me back. And when I was, they were taking me back, they says, remember this place? You see that hole? That's where the shell exploded. It was a hole big enough you could put a house in. Tremendous shell. I mean, I was lucky. If I hadn't bent over, I don't know what would have happened. I was just fortunate. Guess it wasn't my time. But it was funny. One of our guys from the shelling, he went under the tank. He figured it would be safe. A piece of shrapnel got the back of his scalp. Just took, you know, like about a half inch of his scalp. He, he came out from the tank and said, would you believe this? He said, you know, it almost knocked my head off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. After the Battle of Hurlishheim, of course, things started going better for the 12th Armored oh, Division. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were always on the move. You know, we kept on going and going. Yep. Now, some of the operations that are more storied. We like to ask for people if they have any memories from them. Uh, the Colmar Pocket operation with the French, did, did you remember anything about that one? Not, not really too much, except, you know, there was a lot of fighting going on, you know. So we, we got out of that. I remember they were using flamethrower tanks and all that stuff. Uh, it's but what was bad, one, one of my buddies, Douglas Briscoe, got killed. We, we, I was in a half track, and the planes were coming over the hill, and you know, strafing and bombing, and I was shooting at them, and the gun kept jamming. After the second time, I said to Douglas, I said, let's get out of here. So we ran off the road. I jumped off the road down the embankment. He was still on the road. The bomb exploded and killed him. Unbelievable. I mean, I was covered with dirt and all that stuff, and, and I never forget that. Okay, going from the uh, the Seventh Army under General Patch to getting attached to General Patton for a, for a little while. Well, I, I tell you, he was a terrific soldier. I mean, he was strict, rough, tough, but he was a good good soldier. I mean, he knew his stuff. We were lucky to have him. Now, what do you remember of your part in that? I hear a lot of guys talking about sleeping in the half tracks and constantly on the move. Oh yeah, I, I used to sleep on the on the tank fender because I don't like sleeping on the ground you know okay now into Germany and liberating the POW camps were you on hand for any of that stuff well I actually saw what they did but I didn't actually take part in it you know I, I saw the, the bad bodies and all that yeah. stuff tell me anything you remember that you'd care to, t to share with me what's that t tell me anything that you remember that you'd care to talk about uh, about no. the camps, no? No. It was, it was just horrible just seeing all those bodies. Unbelievable. I can't believe that anybody could do that to a human being. I mean, they were emaciated, uh, terrible 
starved to death. Uh, one of my buddies, he was in the 17th. We grew up together, and he ended up being captured. And of course, the 17th, they took, they got a whole bunch of them captured. Him. I mean, he went through a bad time. It ruined his health. I mean, he came back, he was never healthy. But it's, it's one of those things that's happened. War is a terrible thing. It never proved anything because people get hurt, get killed, and bad things still happen. Now, on past that to the end of the war, when the war ended, do you remember where you were and what you were doing? I don't remember the name of the town, but what we were doing, we were guarding prisoners, American prisoners. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, those that had deserved it and done things that they shouldn't have done. And that, that's what we did for a while. And then eventually, you know, they had the point system where you could come home. In the meantime, I was lucky. My daughter was born while I was over there, so I got five extra points. And being wounded and time served in, I got to get home early. Fantastic. So tell me about life after the Army. Well, after the Army, I uh, went and worked in a metal shop, and I did that for 42 years. Ran a metal shop. They did work for electronics. In fact, I did metal work for the first computer that was ever built at the University of Pennsylvania. I mean, it was a small shop that I worked in, but somehow my boss had connections with the university, and it was unbelievable. Two great, huge things, you know. But now you carry a computer in your hand. <laughs> what a difference. And that brings me to, to another question. Seeing what you've seen, going through the Depression, going through the war, and then all the time after, what can you tell me? What, what, what have you seen? What sticks out most to you? About what sticks Trump? out mostly for me, I was lucky. I married a wonderful woman. I have three wonderful children grandchildren that are fantastic, you know, and that's what life's about. I mean, I'm really happy and pleased to, to have all this. And I'm lucky to be here at age 90, 89. So that's one of those things. Well, sir, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. I thank you.